February 10th, 939 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby number one. Hey there everyone, this is Danielle. Let's get this done. <laughs> Good morning. Oh? Are you by yourself? Ah, uh, morning pulse. Mr. Nick, please tell me. What's gonna happen to Mystic Maya? I'm sorry, we don't know yet. Investigation is still going on, so I wasn't allowed into the inner temple. Oh, I see. So is Sister Iris still trying to remove those trick locks in the training hall? No, she's the defendant in this case, so she can't be at the inner temple. She's required to be here in court. Why? <laughs> but that seems like a pretty silly rule. But go off, I guess. <laughs> Um, then, how come she's not here in the defendant's lobby? I have to admit it's kind of strange. I think this is Gotto? You're looking for Iris. She's in the prosecutor's lobby. Oh no, it's Edgeworth. Ed Edgeworth, I used the wrong voice. What's Iris doing over there? She's going over the day's testimony with the prosecutor as we speak. Today's testimony? You heard me. Iris is going to be testifying as a witness for the prosecution. Wait, what? The prosecutor is squeezing her for a confession. So I heard. Franziska von Karma, what are you up to? I know what you're thinking, but Franziska isn't going to be the prosecutor today. What? Then who is? Who else would it be but Gotto? Oh. I'm gonna put my glasses on, just a second. I'm aware you can't see me, but I couldn't see what was on screen properly either, so... <laughs> Franziska is engaged in some important work at the Sacred Cavern. The Sacred Cavern? You don't mean that she's... Exactly. She has been out there all night trying to remove those trick locks. With the head nun's assistance, naturally. We estimate that the last of the locks should be taken care of in about three hours. Sorry for that little uh, gap for a second there. Uh, when I got my glasses on, I realized they needed cleaning, so I went and cleaned them. I'm back now. Let's go. Hope everything continues to go smoothly and we'll receive some good news soon. Yeah, thanks, Edgeworth. Prosecutor Gotto intends to nail this case shut today. We're prepared to fight like there's no tomorrow. You don't have to tell me that. Touche. I can already see it in your eyes. You are not the same fever-ridden, frantic maniac you were yesterday. It's strange. On the way here, I decided that today would be the end of all this. Almost immediately after I made that decision, I felt myself getting stronger. Interesting. Maybe you passed your cold one to someone else. Literally. Is there a figurative way of doing that? <laughs> and with that, I leave the rest in your capable hands, partner. Boyfriend. Beloved. <laughs> look, look, Edgeworth and, and, and Phoenix, they, they, they want to kiss. It, it's indisputable that they are in love. They want to kiss. Thanks. Love you, babe. <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. I still don't have answers for most of the riddles plaguing this case. Circumstances around the murder of Miss Elise Junim? No, I mean Miss Misty Fay. The impossible flight Larry claims to have seen? And what that woman is really after. I will solve them all and bring this whole tragedy to an end. February 10th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 7. Court is now in session for the trial of Iris of Hazakura Temple. Um, Your Honor? What are you... Who? Me? Well, my little brother came to visit me in my chambers earlier this morning. All of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, he developed a scorching fever and fainted. Therefore, I'll be standing in for him. I see, Your Honor. They're brothers. That explains a lot. 
My poor brother. He looked a bit pale. Not to mention sad that he couldn't be here. It's impossible to predict what the future has in store for any of us. This is precisely why people feel the need to judge the past. And we of the court have been charged with the solemn duty of passing such judgment. Well said, Mr. Goddard. I understood exactly what you said, at least up until the end, anyway. Now then, Mr. Goddard, please proceed with your opening statement. Humans are fragile, fickle beings. Our hearts change with the shifting of the tides. There is only one thing that remains a constant in this crazy world. The bitter darkness that lies at the bottom of this mug. So then you mean... Uh, forget it, what do you mean? During yesterday's trial, the accused refused to admit her role in the crime. But today, she has had a change of heart. Sister Iris of Harzakura Temple has a confession to make. Confession? The, the defendant? Why didn't you discuss this with me first? Very well. This court will now hear the defendant's confession. When meeting a beautiful lady, always ask for her name and profession. That's one of my rules. Um, my name is Iris. I am but a simple nun undergoing training at Hazakura Temple. Witness, is there something you want to confess to? Yes. But first, I want to apologize to Mr. Wright. I... I can't continue lying to everyone anymore. Uh, it's alright. What is it? Mr. Wright, I have to admit that I... I did play a part in this terrible incident. Uh, are you actually confessing? Are you saying that you were the one who murdered Miss Elise Junim? No, I'm not, Your Honor. I dealt with the cover-up after the murder took place. After her spirit left, I took the lifeless shell of Mystic Elise and carried it to the Hazakura Temple Courtyard where I desecrated it. What? Order in the court. Order. Witness. Are you... Are you saying you were an accomplice to the murder? Yes. That's correct. What? Three minutes in court and I'm already covered in a cold sweat. Huh. Everyone on the planet is an accomplice to something. It just happens to be that in this case, it's to murder. Y yeah. I'm I'm 14 and this is deep. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mr. Trite? That Godo. But this is the confession they were conferring about. It pains me to say this, but it looks like Iris's testimony was all a lie. Iris's testimony crumpled up and shoved into a pocket. Now then, little lady, if you don't mind, I've got a question for you. Whose crime were you trying to cover up by your action? Iris was covering for someone? Yes, of course she was. She just admitted to doing that. Pay attention, Phoenix. <laughs> now I'm definitely up the creek without a paddle or a life jacket. I've been at Hazakura Temple ever since I was a little girl. Hazakura Temple is run by one of the branch families of the Kurain tradition. One of our missions is to protect the main family. I'm sorry, but main family? Yes, and that's why I would dirty myself, if need be, to protect her. The daughter of the master. Rain channeling technique. Mystic Maya Fey. Huh? Wake up and smell the coffee, Trite. He's naming... Maya? Order! Order in the court! And not only did you witness- did you witness the murder, you know the name of the murderer! I'm terribly sorry, but it's true. I saw her commit the crime with my very own eyes. And then I cleaned up the area to try to protect her. Objection! Th that's ridiculous! Maya could never do such a- The defense will refrain from commenting until the appropriate time. Now, witness, let's hear your testimony. What exactly happened on the night of the crime? Yes, Your Honor. 
thought I was prepared for the unexpected. But I never imagined the case would wind up going in this direction. Witness testimony. The real murderer. I went to the inner temple that night and I saw it all happen in the garden. I saw Mr. Elise strike Mystic Maya with her staff. While Mystic Maya was still stumbling, Mystic Elise moved in to deliver a fatal strike. Mystic Maya tried desperately to defend herself and stole the weapon. It was only in self-defense. You can't blame her for it. So it was in self-defense? Yes, Mystic Elise was the one who attacked first. Hmm. That's why I tried my best to protect Mystic Maya. You moved the victim's body to the temple so that Maya wouldn't be suspected. Isn't that right? Not bad. You've got the instincts of a true criminal. Something's not quite right. It was established yesterday that Iris never went to the inner temple that night. And that the person who did go was... a woman. Iris even admitted it. Now then, Mr. Wright, please proceed with the cross-examination. Cross-examination, the real murderer. I think we need to press? Mr. Irish, your testimony has changed quite a bit since yesterday. You stated yesterday that on the night of the murder, you didn't go to the inner temple. Objection. Did she now? Too bad for you, what she said yesterday doesn't mean much today. By the way, where were you when she claimed that she didn't go? Um, I... It was in the Inner Temple's training hall? A private conversation between the two of you does not constitute testimony. That would be properly described as hearsay. Hmm. What do you have to say, witness? I just couldn't tell him the truth at that time. Mystic Maya... She's your girlfriend, isn't she? I... I didn't want to be the one to break it to you that I saw her commit murder. There, there. We all understand how difficult this is for you. Now then, let's continue with the testimony. What did you witness in the Temple Garden? Well, Your Honor... Hi. You're saying that the victim attacked Maya? I mean, Ms. Faye? Yes, it was a truly frightening scene. Mystic Maya was struck hard on the head and looked like she was going to collapse. What were you doing at the time? Um... Why didn't you stop them from fighting? I I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. I was... I was frightened. I couldn't move. I couldn't even speak. I was in such shock. Hmm. That's perfectly understandable, my dear. It doesn't sound right. I don't believe this testimony for a minute. What happened after that? She moved in to deliver a fatal strike? Yes, I'm sure of it. She threw down her staff and reached into her robe for a weapon? Wait a minute. What was this weapon? It, it was some kind of dagger. A dagger, huh? And Elise Junim tried to stab her with this weapon. To kill Ms. Faye. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you look like I did after I mistakenly took a swig of Wor Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Do you have a problem with the testimony we're hearing from your client, lawyer boy? Hmm, do you have a problem with Iris' testimony? There is one thing. Your Honor, I have a small problem with the witness's testimony. Y you do? But this witness is your own client. Yes, well, nevertheless. That's fine. Witness, let's add your last statement for testimony. Y yes, sir. Hey, just a moment. It's my job to say that. Listen, Gramps, I won't say it again. Final judgment will be rendered by me. Mm. Okay, now, let's continue. She threw her staff away and pulled the dagger from inside her robe. Does anyone else see a problem here? Ah. Uh, hey, that staff, ah, uh, is actually a sword. 
which is a pretty fantastic weapon to kill someone with. Objection! Mr. Iris, there's something strange about your version of events. Huh? Miss Dunim throwing her staff away makes no sense at all to me. But, but all you can do with a staff is hit someone. Naturally, you wouldn't know this, Sister Iris, but... The victim's staff had a special feature about it. As you can see, it's a sword. Ah! If Elise Junim really had wanted to kill Maya Faye, she wouldn't have needed to use a separate dagger, not when she already had a beautiful blade in her hands already, already, already! I'm just gonna say already multiple times! <laughs> ah, the typos. Well, Sister Iris, what do you have to say? Uh, uh, I... That was an impressive bit of investigating, Trish. I never would have thought there was a sword hidden in that star. But even so, how should I put this? A long sword is unwieldy and thus quite ineffective in close quarters combat. Maybe that's why she chose a dagger over her blade. Um, well... Anyway, the type of weapon she chose to use isn't what's important. The important thing is that she tried to kill Maya Fey. As long as there's nothing strange about that, there's no problem with her testimony. There's something strange about this whole testimony. Well, Mr. Wright, the prosecution has a point. Very well, Your Honor. The defense will now present evidence to back its argument. Mr. Wright, I have here another piece of evidence that shows that this testimony can't be trusted. Because Miss Elise Junin would never attempt to take the life of Maya Faye. See, this is kind of a weird, a bit of a stretch, but yeah, she, she is Maya's mother. Like, mothers killing their daughters happens, but this is what we're supposed to say. Elise Junin would never have attacked Maya Faye. How can you be so sure? Because the victim's real name was not Elise Junin. Her real name was Misty Faye. Hey, ah, uh, no, not Mystic Misty Fay. Who is this Misty Fay? Is she related to Misty Fay? Is the master of the Curane Challenge technique. She is also the mother of Maya Fay. Uh, are you serious? Is it really true, Mister Wright? Is at least him actually the great Mystic Misty? There's no doubt about it. Like Iris had no idea. I hardly believe it. The idea that she would try to kill her only daughter when she hadn't seen in 17 years. Perhaps the prosecution can offer some explanation for why we should she should do such a thing. <laughs> why she would do such a thing. Ah, I got all scrambled up there. <laughs> order, order in the court. Upon first hearing the witness's testimony, it seemed natural enough. However, in the light of some facts that have just been presented. One, that the victim supposedly threw away a sword during a fight. And two, that the two people battling to the death were mother and daughter? Despite the facts being believable when taken on their own, when taken together, the entire story seems difficult to believe. Listen, there's nothing in this world that is impossible. Except for one little thing. Yes? What is this one little impossible thing? Huh. Still don't get it. You think maybe my beans are under-roasted, but you have no idea, Gramps. Um, did you get to your point? I heard this witness's confession this morning. Just as I had taken the first sip of my eighth cup of morning coffee. Gonna ruin your health, my friend. Anyway, after hearing this woman's confession, I had a detective who loves to investigate sent to the scene of the crime. And he discovered this little beauty. Is that the dagger the witness testified to seeing? Obviously, Your Honor. But do you not notice something else? Now that you mention it, if you look closely, there appears to be blood on it. Where did you find that? I didn't say that when I investigated the crime scene. 
to investigate the pine tree at the crime scene? Huh? The pine tree? What pine tree? I can see a tree there, but it's clearly not a pine tree. <laughs> this dagger was stuck in the backside of the pine tree. But that, that's not a pine tree. <laughs> and the last blow was struck, ending the violent battle between the two women. This little baby was thrown in the direction of the back of the... Is it an acacia? It's not, it's not a pine tree. In the tree that's not a pine tree. <laughs> Which means... The blood on this dagger belongs to the victim, correct? Ha! Are you even listening, old man? I first heard this confession this morning, just as I had taken the first sip of my 13th cup of morning coffee. <laughs> you could say it was your 8th just a few minutes ago. I didn't have enough time to get the blood analysed on such short notice. In any case, the court will accept the dagger as evidence. Furthermore, I ordered that a blood test be performed on it immediately. This is my sweetheart. Make sure you treat her right. Otto, you're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> hey, let's get this piece of evidence to the crime lab for testing immediately. Now then, testimony we've just heard has numerous unbelievable aspects to it. However, after having found the very dagger the witness spoke of, I believe we can consider her testimony to be credible. Cute girls never lie. Ever. <laughs> Considering who you are, Goto, that's a really weird thing to say. <laughs> Any case, witness, if you could please testify again to this court. Um, about... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, about what, Your Honor? I forgot to do my iris voice. <laughs> about the incident you saw. The battle between the two women. Y yes, Your Honor. The battle. Witness testimony. Mystic Maya stumbled briefly after being hit over the head with the staff, but then she dodged Mystic Elisa's next attack and stole her weapon. Suddenly, Mystic Elise was the one on the defensive with her back to the stone lantern. Red. That's when Mystic Maya stabbed Mystic Elise. Mystic Elise managed to fling the knife away, but then. then she collapsed. That was a very heartbreaking story. I don't know if there were any bad feelings between them, but... It had been 17 years since Mystic Misty's disappearance. Perhaps they simply didn't recognise each other anymore. Hmm, that seems reasonable. Now then, Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross-examination. Okay, so the problem with this... Uh... Is... This claim. If Mystic Elise is, has her back to the stone lantern and she gets stabbed, she would get stabbed in the front. Uh, but if we find... Uh, we have evidence here. There we go. Loss of blood from a stab in back. It is impossible to stab her in the back if her back is to the stone lantern. Okay, that was clearly wrong. Why didn't the music stop? The game's being picky. In a statement, clearly faulty, Your Honor. Okay, okay, that was... That was clearly, clearly a contradiction. Was I supposed to present it to this one? I'll give that a try. Okay. Clearly it should have worked on either of them. Go off, I guess. Something about you just isn't right today, Iris. Huh? Until now, I didn't think you were the type to make such a careless mistake. However, the testimony you just gave contains quite a few contradictions. W what do you mean? What's so wrong about my testimony? According to you... Maya Faye stabbed the victim while she had her back to the stone lantern, correct? Right? Yes, that's right. But in that case, the victim would have been stabbed in the stomach, correct? Right? Yes, I think so. But according to the autopsy report, the cause of death was due to blood loss from a stab wound in her back. Ah! This proves that the victim was stabbed from behind, not from the front. 
Sister Iris, it appears another seed of doubt has sprouted from your testimony. Ah! Uh... What? What is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? Huh. It's simple. People are like books. They've all got a front and a back. You get my drift? Um, is that all you have to say? I can also say that darkness loves to play with the human mind. Will you please knock it off with the cheesy proverbs and illogical metaphors already? The point is, too much of this testimony just doesn't make sense. Throwing away a useful star, people fighting being mother and daughter? And now, she falsely claims the victim was stabbed in the stomach. Hmm, there certainly are some inconsistencies. Oh, Iris, how about it? Well, it's just... If you ask me, you're just being too naive about the whole thing. What do you mean? There are 253 distinct types of bitterness in coffee. But to pick out each one requires total concentration, the use of all the senses. Were you really concentrating on what this witness actually said? For you to Gotto, explain yourself. The witness was quite un ambiguous about her own ambiguities when she said that the garden was dark and she couldn't see clearly. A human needs one thing to see clearly, and that is light. Light. By the way, did you know? Azakura has a rule that on night when an acolyte at the inner temple training, the stone lantern in the garden must be kept lit. Hmm, I did wonder what that stone lantern was there for. Well, if that's true, shouldn't the witness have been able to see the crime more clearly? Normally, yes, Your Honor. But according to the head nun, Sister Bikini, on the night of the crime, it was impossible to light that stone lantern. Impossible? It hadn't been used in a long time and the wick was no good. In other words, it had, it had to have been nearly pitch black in the garden that night. There could have been a faint light coming from the training hall, but that's all. Most enlightening. Yes, that illuminating fact has chased all the contradictions away. If the staff was dropped, it would be difficult to see. It also explains why they didn't recognise each other. We can't see the demons that lurk in the night. That's why humans are weak. Isn't that right, Trite? No! Order, order, order! Here, Your Honor. Let me present the stone lantern into evidence. Maybe it will rekindle the flame of truth in your mind. Stone lantern add to the court record. Why is the judge just sitting there with that look on his face? What's wrong, Your Honor? Was that flame too hot? But this lantern... There's something written on it. Why... It's written in blood! Oh boy. The judge didn't know about that yet. Written in blood? It... It says... It says Maya upside down. What the... Oh yes, that's right. After being cornered and then stabbed by Mystic Maya, Mystic Elise didn't fall down right away. She must have been writing that on the stone lantern behind her. It's the blood that was draining out of her body. Hmm. It only looks that way. Objection. Hang on, hang on just a minute. What are you all talking about? What do you mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about the message written in blood. Hm, nonsense. This lantern is clean to the whistle. Could it be? He can't see the bloody writing at all? Now that I think of it, he did say something to me yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. That's what he meant by that. In any case, this is obviously an important clue. We now know that the crime scene was dark, and that the victim scrawled this message on the stone lantern. Well, Mr. Gotto, anything further? M Mr. Gotto? Uh, um... Okay then, 
Let's move on. I was literally shaking, and somehow I don't think it's from caffeine overdose. I believe it has now been established that Miss Junim was killed by Mine at Bay. That's just wrong. Now it's time to turn our attention to you. Yes, sir. After the victim died, you did something, didn't you? Let's hear it. For all ears. Mr. Iris's cover-up. After Mystic Elise died, I called out to Mystic Maya. I thought it was my duty to protect the future master of the Kurain tradition. So I removed the body from the inner temple by myself, I dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge, and I used the snowmobile to carry it back to Hazakura Temple and... I used the Shichishido to alter the way the wound looked. So you moved the body? Yes, I was raised at Hazakura Temple. I owe a great deal of thanks to the Fate Clan. Even so, I never imagined. The least do Nim was actually Misty Fay. I committed a terrible sin. Hmm. Terrible trick of fate. I believe you're looking for a twist of fate, Your Honor. I intended to return to the inner temple after taking care of the body, but You were spotted by the head nun, correct? Yes, and that's why I couldn't go back. The story makes sense, I suppose. Mr. Wright, go ahead with the cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so the problem we have here... ...is this. Uh, you may recall that Dusky Bridge was very on fire for quite a while. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little tricky to cross a bridge that is on fire. Uh, I'm not sure which piece of evidence we want to use, though. Possibly this one? Might need to press first, just to be sure. Pretty amazing you could make it all the way across. That's a rickety old bridge. It looks worse than it is. It's surprisingly sturdy, despite its age. Like they say, idiots are too stupid to catch even a simple cold. But there's one other thing that bothers me. Why not just throw the body into the Eagle River? It would have been much easier than dragging it all the way to Hazakura Temple. I thought that it would still cast too much suspicion on Mystic Mile. That's why I tried to take the body as far away as possible. Huh. Makes perfect sense to me. The time being. Anyway. What did you do after you crossed the bridge? I might need to know what time it is. Why did you do that? Because I didn't want Mystic Mai to be suspected in any way. I thought the best thing would be to remove the body from the crime scene. You moved her body all by yourself? Yes, I did. It would have been impossible if it wasn't for the snow. The snow, huh? Snowmobile? I knew that would show up sooner or later. Yes, I had the key. I used the snowmobile to travel from Hazakura Temple to Dusky Bridge. This is the part that was in question the other day. Could I ask for more details? If you really did move her body by snowmobile, then there should be tracks left in the snow, right? Well, yes, naturally you would expect tracks. This picture was presented at yesterday's trial. Are these the tracks from that ride? Yes, I think they are. But I can only see one set of tracks here. I don't see what's so strange about that. Snow was still falling when I left Hazakura Temple. I see, snow was still falling, huh? And then when the murder took place, it already stopped. That's why there are such fresh looking tracks. Hmm. How about it, Mr. Wright? What do you think about this testimony? Very important. When the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. That doesn't make sense if you stack it up against the other evidence. Your Honor, I'd like the statement Iris just made added to the testimony. 
But does it have something to do with the case? All will be made clear if you allow a statement to be added to record. Huh. This should be fun. You. Let's get this snow business cleared up, shall we? Y yes, sir. By the time the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. Sure. Maybe the weather report? Objection. Okay, that didn't work. It's been a while since I've played this case, unfortunately. Like, I can see the contradiction, but apparently the game can't. There have been a lot of contradictions in your testimony so far. This time, are you sure it's all true? Yes, I am. When the murder happened, the snow had already stopped. According to you, that's why the snowmobile tracks were so clear. But that's right. I'm certain of it. I think I've trapped her this time. I see how you think. No, huh? What is going on here? Snow really had stopped by the time of the murder. It means there's a bigger hole in her story than that movie, The Grid Revelations. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well then, Mr. Tribe, perhaps you'd like to share your theory with us? Let's see what's up your sleeve. Or rather, at the end of your index finger. Hmm? I don't want to believe it, but I don't think my logic is failing me. Paris is trying to pin the murder on Maya. But why would she want to do that? There's only one reason I can think of. Maybe I'm meant to present the weather report here? Objection! Yes, okay. You claim that the snow had already stopped when the murder occurred. I'm sorry, Iris. That just isn't possible. What? This is the weather data from the night of the murder. According to this, the snow didn't stop until 10.50pm. You couldn't have crossed Dusky Bridge at that time. Why do you say that? Because five minutes before the snow stopped, Dusky Bridge was struck by lightning and had caught on fire. What did you say? The bridge? It was on fire? You don't mean to say you didn't know about it? It was because of that lightning strike that the bridge burned down. What? But it can't... it can't be! Looks like you still haven't figured it out. No matter how hard you try to deceive or conceal the truth, you can't pull the wool over the eyes of a real defense attorney. No! Order, order, order! The bridge was already on fire when the incident took place. That's right, the inner temple was already totally cut off from the outside world. There's no way you could have crossed the bridge, body or nobody. Ah, uh, uh. Witness, even my patience has its limits. Any further lying and I will find you in contempt of court. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Ugh. The only person here that is truly contemptible is you. Old man. Me? How dare you? Whether this witness lied or not doesn't mean squat right now. Squat? The important thing now is to find out the truth, isn't that right? Yes, of course, but... Whether it was snowing or not snowing, or whether the bridge was burning or not, there are two facts that can't be disputed. First, the body of Elise Junim was discovered in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. And second, the head nun, Sister Bikini, witnessed Iris desecrating Elise Junim's body. A good point in both accounts. But that's right. I'm not lying. What are you claiming this time? I wasn't myself at all that night. Though my memory is still somewhat hazy. You have stood at that witness stand and testified this entire time. Are you telling us now that your memory of that night is hazy? It's only human to err. Uh, you're so perfect to try it, maybe you can explain this for the court. What is it? When the murder happened, the bridge had already burnt down. 
that somehow the body travelled across the bridge and was found in the temple courtyard. Perhaps you have some kind of perfect explanation for this little magic trick. Ugh. Well, not exactly, no. There must be some other way she got across that burnt out bridge. Unless I can somehow demonstrate it, we'll never know the truth. Looks like the defense is not prepared to offer a suitable explanation. You see what I mean? In other words, you're in no position to suggest that this lady's testimony isn't the truth. Ah! Alright then. Witness, let's hear your testimony once more. About what, Your Honor? You admitted that you moved the victim's body. Nevertheless, your prior testimony contained a rather large inconsistency. Please add an explanation for that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. Will this be her final testimony? Moving the body. Other than walking over the bridge, there's no way to move the body. So I must have just gotten confused, I guess. Was the snow still falling? I had it stopped. Does it really matter that much? Or are you saying that there is a way to cross a burning bridge? Hmm. That no, was just a misunderstanding, I see. This is a photo of Dusky Bridge after it burned down from the lightning blast. It was taken on the morning after the incident. It certainly was burned to a crisp, and... One of the suspension wires even snapped. It's amazing the whole bridge didn't fall. Clearly it would be impossible to carry a corpse across a bridge in this condition. Dusky Bridge photo to the court record. Unless I do something to discredit this testimony, it's going to be deemed as the truth, and Maya will be accused of murder. Right, I'm only going to say it one more time. It is only human to err, uh, and only humans can spot the errors of our ways. The more sense he makes, the less sense he makes. Alright, Mr. Wright, please begin your final cross-examination. Okay, so... You may recall from the last, uh, trial segment that we figured out a bit of a way to cross a burning bridge, uh... You can fly across it! <laughs> a dead body flying over a burning bridge. We wouldn't exactly rule out the possibility. What? Ha! Just saying it's possible, don't make me laugh. The only thing that's possible about your claim is that it's been pulled out of thin air. I don't know about that. In any case, you have a witness who did see it happen. Preposterous! <laughs> who is it? Who is this witness? Can't chicken out here. I've got to keep on the attack. And go, go, go! Miseloustunim's brilliant and highly gifted apprentice. Loristunim. Brilliant? Highly gifted? Apprentice? Remember what he said in his testimony. That night he was at the mountain shack at Only Hall. And that's when he witnessed the event. I think you've all seen this sketch before. An exact drawing of what he witnessed that night. Are you serious? Today's not April Fool's Day, is it? Oh, no. It's actually April 2nd today when I'm recording, so... No! <laughs> Mr. Wright, are you seriously claiming the victim th flew through the air? And you're using this pathetic scribble to support your argument? Uh-oh. The judge looks like he's about to blow a gasket. Huh. Well, Trite, there's nowhere for you to hide now. Other than looking like it was drawn by a six-year-old, does this sketch prove anything? Y yes, I'm pretty sure it does, and I'm going to prove it. Listen, I know your tricks. You're trying to turn this whole thing upside down. If you're so eager to turn this case upside down, why not start with a sketch? Um, I'd gotta say that. <laughs> Alright then, let's hear the defense's theory. What exactly is the sketch trying to show? I don't think old Whiskerface is gonna forgive any more mistakes. Alright, Phoenix, look carefully and think it over. This sketch drawn by Larice Janim is... a complete contradiction. 
something is obviously funny about this sketch. I'm no art critic, but even I can see that. No, no, that's not what I mean, Your Honor. Larice Junior stated it over and over, that this sketch was exactly as he saw it. However, if we're to believe his testimony, then the sketch contradicts reality as we know it. Contradicts reality? <laughs> this is getting interesting. Looks like you're back to that finger-pointing thing again. Okay, try it. But what exactly contradicts reality as we know it? It's not this. This happened. This is the interesting part. These wires. This wire connected to the bridge. The wire? <laughs> is that the thing that contradicts reality? It is indeed. And show us the reality it supposedly conflicts with. Show us something that will point out how the sketch contradicts reality. We can now, because we got this photograph from Goro a moment ago. Uh, we have evidence that the bridge wires are under the bridge, not above it. Uh, we couldn't prove that until he gave us this photo just now, so it was very helpful that he did that. <laughs> it's a photo of Dusky Bridge, correct? Yes, now compare the sketch in the photo for a minute. In the sketch, the wires appear to be above the guard wires. But on the actual Dusky Bridge. Jumpin' Jehoshaphat! <laughs> what? The wires are below the guard wires. What? Gotto, why are you so surprised? You clearly knew this. Order, order, order. This sketch is somewhat different than what's depicted in the photo. However, isn't it likely that Alice just saw it wrong? Or perhaps he just drew it wrong? Either way, it sounds like you're just wrong. With someone like Larissa, I admit a mistake is a definite possibility. But then that begs the question, which I mean raises the question, does not beg a question. Why did he make a mistake? What was the reason? Are you saying you know the answer to that? Listen, think back, alright? Remember what Larissa was doing when he witnessed this event. He was at Heavenly Hall waiting for a lover that was never going to come. He waited and waited and finally he laid down. But then, lightning shoots from the sky and sets the bridge aflame! Now ponder what sort of position Larise must have been in at the time. In this picture we have shown you like 12 times in the past couple of minutes. He was lying on his back, which is why he remembered the scene the way he did. He was lying on his back? I can't see how it relates. But it does, Your Honor. That is the reason why the wires in this sketch go up instead of down. Ah! Uh, no way. The race Junior witnessed the event while he was lying on his back, face up. In other words, the scene that he saw was actually upside down. So then, this sketch should actually... I think you finally get it, Your Honor. The correct way to view Larry Stinham's sketch is like this. This is how it should actually look. The victim's body wasn't flying above the bridge. It was actually swinging below. That's right, just like a pendulum. Ridiculous! <laughs> order, order, order! Of all the things to say, a pendulum? The bridge was burning to a crisp, there was no way to get across it. But if the body had been found at the inner temple, it would have caused problems. This is where the criminal decided to take a gamble. They used the burning bridge to get the body across to the other side, and a pendulum was the only way to get it done. Let's think about this for a minute, shall we? Dusky Bridge is about 20 yards long, which means it's about that far from the inner temple to the opposite cliff. Yes, that sounds right. In order to cover that distance with a pendulum, you'd need a rope at least 10 yards long. To get a rope that long, you have to plan ahead. The lightning strike that night could only have been an accident, so it doesn't make sense that the culprit would have prepared the rope beforehand. So then... They didn't have to get the rope ready. The rope was already right in front of them. What? I'm saying that it was just a matter of using what was already there. In that case, Mr. Wright, please give us an explanation to support your theory. 
What makes you think the criminal had the rope on hand to create a pendulum? It's this photograph, because we can see the rope in it. <laughs> and the meaning of this is... You want to know where the rope came from? It's hanging right there in front of your glorious beard. Ah! This... This is one of the wires from the bridge! When the lightning struck the bridge and set it on fire, one of the suspension wires came loose from its anchor. The criminal didn't have any time to wait. They tied the wire around Alicia Nim's body. <laughs> because there was simply no other way to move the body. Oh, drink some water as well. I say as well, but Gotto's drinking coffee. Mr. Gotto? Oh, he's very thirsty. Hmm. It seems that Mr. Gotto is more focused on his coffee than answering my question. It seems that the odds of a rope being readily available were very high. So I suppose it's not an impossibility after all. Possible or impossible? That's not the question we need to ask. There's only one question. Did that really happen? Right. I wonder if you can prove what happened to us. Do you have any actual evidence the body was swung over like a pendulum? We do, actually. Uh, I'll bring up the map. That's not the map. That is a uh, Misty Phase image covered in gravy. This one. Uh, so if the if the if the body was swung over from the bottom right corner where the cable is missing it would land in the top left corner. And as you can see, there's a little blue circle there, because an object was found there, in that exact spot. Uh, as if perhaps Misty Fay was swung across and landed there, and the sphere came off her staff at that time. Before I present my evidence, let me review what we know so far. According to this photo, one of the wires snapped. Looking at the map, we can see it's the one that was in front of the inner temple. So then, that was the spot where the criminal... Yes, precisely. Now let us consider the body's movement by looking at the overhead map again. If the body was pushed from this point here... It would drop on the opposite bank at approximately this point. D did you say drop? Well, they must have failed to catch the body on the other bank. What? What do you think something like that happened? because I have evidence that suggests her body dropped some distance. What kind of evidence? Take a look at this autopsy report. It says here that her body fell about 10 feet after her death. 10 feet, huh? That's most likely the height difference between the two sides. The body overswung due to forward momentum, but then came loose and fell about 10 feet. And then, as a result of the landing impact, this crystal sphere was knocked loose. That's... Yes, this blood-stained amethyst crystal. It's the one that came off Mr. Lysogenim's staff. And even more important is the place where this crystal sphere was found. It, indeed, I believe it's already marked on this overhead map. The crystal sphere was found... Ah! Precisely, Your Honor. In the very spot where the pendulum would arrive if given the right amount of speed. This explains the theory quite well, Mr. Wright. You have provided us with a way the body could have been moved that night. An impressive deduction, Mr. Wright. Most impressive. Mr. Wright! I thought this cold coffee might help cool you down. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Goro? That was a dark and bitter guess that you made, trite. But you forgot about one thing. Oh, and what would that be? The aroma. Huh? Coffee's most reliable accomplice is its deep and profound aroma. Um, the rest of the court doesn't speak coffee knees. Can you elaborate a bit more? A criminal had sent the body to the other side, like you say. And naturally, there must have been an accomplice lying in wait to catch it. An accomplice? The criminal wasn't able to cross Dusky Bridge. So, who collected the body? What do you have to say about that, Trite? 
Mr. Goddard was correct. This can't be the work of a single person. Well, Mr. Wright, you know what you must do. Yes, Your Honor. But he couldn't have made it to Hazakura Temple without an accomplice. Very well then, if you please, Mr. Wright. Who was the person who received the body on the Hazakura Temple side? Unfortunately, uh, it's exactly who you think it is. It's Iris. It can only be you, Sister Iris. Huh? Ah! But, but I... I... I didn't see why you're so surprised. The only way to transport the body from Dusky Bridge is by snowmobile. But with her bad back, Sister Bikini could never pick up a body like that. You're the only one that could have managed it. Objection. Right. Were you even listening to the witness's testimony? On the night of the crime, this little cutie pie was on cleanup duty in the inner temple garden after the mother-daughter bloodbath. Objection. I haven't forgotten, but have you, Mr. Gotto? This witness was also seen at Hazakura Temple, desecrating the corpse of the victim. Hmm. Strange indeed. It's almost as if that night the defendant was in two different places at the same time. Mr. Iris, let me ask you something. Why didn't you mention it when you first gave your testimony? M mention what? The pendulum, of course. Using this sketch drawn by an eyewitness, I have established how the body was moved using the burnt out bridge. Which means it's now a fact that this occurred, something you should have already known. N no, I, I had no idea. I, I didn't know anything about a pendulum. But the body couldn't have been passed along to the other side without your help. So you should have known about it. In fact, it'd be impossible for you to be clueless about this whole thing. Unless you're not really Iris to begin with. What? How can you say that, Mr. Wright? What? What kind of nonsense is this? You, you're saying this witness isn't Iris of Hazakura Temple? Uh, are you serious, Trite? You, you mean, this woman is... There's no one besides Iris that could have received the corpse that night. Now I get it. Now I know why I've been sick to my stomach this whole trial. Why her whole demeanor changed so suddenly from yesterday. And why she's trying to pin this murder on Maya. The woman that's standing there at the witness stand. Her real name is... Dahlia Hawthorne. Never thought I'd have to utter your name again, let alone see you. It's been a long time, Dahlia Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Sister Iris had a twin sister. And you're looking at her, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. That name rings some bells. Distant bells, but bells nonetheless. Huh. Just your imagination, Gramps. This file contains all the relevant data of our daily Hawthorne. Oh yes, I remember now. That case, five years ago. My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I just want to say, it's an honour for me to be here in your noble presence. Or is all mine? No, the honour is all mine. But, according to this, Dahlia Hawthorne is already dead. It says her execution was carried out last month. So what? Death has no meaning in this courtroom. What? Order, order, order! Wait a moment! How can you- my sister, she's already dead. Well, what kind of... You of all people should already understand. After all, the blood of the master of the Q-Rain channeling technique flows within that body. Q-Rain channeling technique? How have I heard that? That's right, you're not Dahlia Hawthorne herself. You're the spirit of Dahlia, currently inhabiting the body of a spirit medium. What an exciting story. Exciting, but quite impossible. 
you're asking us to buy that daily a Hawthorne just happened to be channeled by someone on the very night of the murder to a temple where her twin sister Iris was? Well, if you're going to put it things that way, then yes. We're supposed to believe a coincidence like that just happens. Naturally, it was no coincidence. The whole thing was part of a plan from the very beginning. It's all written right here in these instructions. Ah, what's that? These instructions were written by your mother, Morgan Fay. And part of the plan called for Dahlia Hawthorne to be channeled. That night, there were two irises at Hazakura Temple. Two of them? Even the time of the channeling was planned out. As soon as you hear the lights out bell, in other words, 10pm. However, Iris was seen before dinner time. It means the Iris that was at dinner was the real Iris. And the Iris who gave me this hood in the main hall was also the real Iris. Meaning that the Iris sister bikini saw at the inner temple was someone else dressed as her, namely it won daily a Hawthorne. Do you even know what you're saying, Trite? This whole channeling the spirit of Dahlia Hawthorne business. Yes, it's true that you found plans that talk about it. However, there's one thing that's perfectly clear. The witness currently standing in the witness stand is the real Iris. What? Calm down and remember what you know about the night of the crime. After meeting Sister Bikini, the Dahlia Hawthorne that had been channeled would have been stranded at the inner temple due to the lightning strike. It was later that the body was moved by Pendulum. That's right. Naturally, that would mean that the Iris that received the body was... the real Iris. Are you with me so far? Yes? After being notified of what happened, the police came to Hazakura Temple's main hall. There they found Iris in her room and arrested her. And ever since, she's been under police supervision at the detention centre. Yes, I suppose. Can't deny any of that. Oh, thank goodness. It looks like he's finally convinced. Something still seems off. Way off. I'm not convinced that the Iris here is the same one from the other night. I suppose you're about to say something really ridiculous. Like, the real Iris and the spirit of Dahlia somehow switched places. Switched places? To be perfectly honest, there are still quite a few things I don't understand, but I do know that unless we confirm the witness's identity, we can't continue with this trial. We didn't have the spiritual power needed to channel Dahlia. Which means, they must have switched places somewhere. Well, Mr. Wright, since the time she was arrested at Hazakura Temple, have there been any chances for Iris to switch places with Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes, actually. Your Honor, I think there may might have been one chance. I'll explain yourself. Yesterday for a few minutes, Iris' whereabouts were unknown. Unknown? What do you mean? What I mean is... There was a span of time which Iris was able to move about freely, unsupervised. Well, who was it? Who would give a murder suspect time to move about freely like that? I'm sorry, I know you didn't mean to, it wasn't your fault. The person who gave Iris the chance to freely move about was... Miles Edgeworth. This is Mr. Edgeworth, isn't it? Your Honor. There was a fairly large earthquake yesterday, was there not? An earthquake? Hmm. An earthquake! Oh my goodness. In a temple. This kind of tremor might... How could I have... He fled. He escaped. We went to the inner temple right away. And it's true, Iris was already there. However, they had already switched places by that point in time. When I arrived at the training hall, I was met by none other than Dahlia Hawthorne. But that's quite enough already, Mr. Wright. Now see here. 
No judge in his right mind would consider the idea of a spirit channeling and... Quiet. It's been a long time, Mr. Judge. That voice. Guess I'll have to ask again. On meeting a beautiful lady, always ask for her name and profession. That's one of my rules. Dahlia Hawthorne. In my current profession, permanently retired. Huh. So you're not going to bother hiding your identity anymore, huh? Why should I? After all, I'm dead. There's really nothing you can do to punish me. What is going on here? Dahlia Hawthorne. I never thought we'd meet again. I never thought we'd meet like this. But this time, I'll end it. For her, and for myself. Be continued. Anyone else see that coming? <laughs> I really love this case. It is extremely good. Uh, we're gonna chuck down a save. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, we get to question Dahlia Hawthorne for realsies. <laughs> Bye!